I'm going to say for a lot of people, the worst April of their lives. Oh, by the way, we're live on Facebook. Yep. As Dave Cullinane reminds me to remind you, we're live on Facebook and we'll look at your comments. He's going to read them and bring them to my attention if they're worth uh, reading or I live, I live in the comments, Jerry. We I live in the, yeah, that's true. Yeah, you're one of those yeah, people that the only time you're on Twitter is when you're fighting or you're conversing with morons. I, I look at that. Tweet, you see my tweet last night about the, the trending section of Twitter? Did you see uh, that? No, I, oh, yeah, yeah I, I did. How much does that piss you off? Like, seriously, though, like you click, it'll be like Tom it Brady. At all. It'll be Tom Brady trending. You click it and it's, it, it's two things. Is Tom Brady dead? Right, it's speculation on when if he's dead, or it's spec. It's wondering why Tom Brady's trending. It's not actually why Tom Brady is trending. Tom, Tom Brady has reached the point a long ago where, he, he, not, even when he doesn't make news, they present it as news. He's become one of those go-to guys on TMZ. So you see TMZ on Twitter or on in social media, and it'll say, you know, Tom Brady, blah, blah, and I'll look at it. It'll say, you know. Tom Brady was uh, playing catch in the park with someone and, and had to, and then the, the mayor of Boston says, I wouldn't have kicked him out of the park <laughs> jokingly. And that's a headline on TMZ. I go, what's yeah. the story? There's nothing there, but Brady's one of those guys, one of those, you know, Kardashian guys that even when he does anything, when he, you know, wakes up in the morning, it's news to them. It's clickbait. So don't, if you see Brady tweet trend trending, don't even click. There's well, nothing. It's just such I'm a machine when, I, when it comes to that. If I see something trending, it's usually like the weirdest place, like hashtag weirdest places I've had sex and I click on it. <laughs> it's nothing good. So it's all, it's always, that's what pisses me off when I think I'm going to get something really cool and it's just a bunch of spam. Mm, that's and that's what I'm looking at what's trending now. Brian Williams. Yep. Uh, that's the basketball some, player. Said something else. The, the awesome. idiot, the, the liar, the, the pathological liar on MSNBC. Chris Hayes, another uh liar on on NBC and then uh Charlotte Strong. I don't even know what that means. Uh Charlotte, is that a person or is that the city? Must anyway, be. something must happen. Anyway, um I was mentioning the end of April and uh, there's good news. We like to look at the bright side of these things. It was a terrible April. We know the whole country shut down, the economy went in the tank, people died, you know, China lied, people died. But I just heard this. It was the coldest April in uh, recorded history, the coldest April, which sounds bad, but maybe, just maybe, that means that, you know, Greta Thunberg will go away now. That Maybe that means, you know, Ed Markey and the rest of these climate change lunatics will leave us alone for a while. I'm not sure if they noticed, but we have bigger problems right now. It's one of the good things to come out of this disaster to come out of this pandemic is we might be done with the climate change lunatics, at least for the time being. We don't have to listen to them, which is a good thing. Yeah. The other good thing I saw was that the shelter in place down in Miami, no one's been murdered in uh, six or seven weeks. So you got the climate change and less murder. Like maybe we all should just be locked in our houses for the rest of our lives. So then when the climate st is better and nobody gets murdered. The biggest, I've dumped, uh, deemed him the biggest asshole on network TV, Chuck Todd. The biggest asshole the other day was celebrating that the air was cleaner, that you could see, you had better visibility. So there's good news. He's sitting there uh, and 26 million people are out of work. Companies are going bankrupt. The, you know, the economy's in the toilet. And this pompous a-hole who... Has nothing to worry about. He's rich. The checks are still coming in. He doesn't miss a day of work. Says, you know what the good thing is? You know, I can see for you know, I have better visibility from my beach house now. Is this Chuck? Clean air and views we haven't seen for a long time. Yay. Clean yeah, air sorry. and views we haven't seen. Does that make people feel better when they can't pay their mortgage, when their small business is going under? This asshole talks about how he can see you know, farther or you know how the air is clearer. I mean, I'm sorry. That doesn't make anybody feel better, at least not anybody who has suffered through this thing. But the good, uh, again, I hope the weather's better in May, but the weather was terrible in April, the worst April that I can remember for this country. Uh, but I, I, I can't help but feel that people are uh, waking up, seeing that light at the end of the tunnel and, and feeling better about the next month than they th thought about the last one. And I'll tell you why. Again, I say this all the time. 
and I'm sure you're in the, this boat, Mute, where you're reading, you're learning, you're watching. You're not just, you know, working in the yard. I know you do some of that. You're not just making your kids, your sons, run gassers, you know, up the hill. A little bit you're, of both. You're noticing that there's a lot of the, the fear-mongering, a lot of the worst-case scenarios are not coming true. There is... Indeed, a lot of the models, a lot of the uh, simulators, they don't call them models now, they call them simulations because the models were so wrong. You know, the models that said, you know, 1 million, 2 million dead, they're wrong. They're wrong. It right. is not. And 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 the notion that, you know, kids, your kids, Dave's kids, my, that they're in danger here was wrong. I mean, the kids, in my opinion, never should have been let out of school. Not at all, because they weren't in any danger. They are not vulnerable. I think the more people learn, the more they realize it is a targeted uh, problem, a targeted epidemic. Unfortunately, it's targeting the old and the, and the infirmed and the obese, but it is not touching children. I mean, your kids, I don't know if they're wearing masks. They don't have to. They're not going to get it. And even if they do, they might not even know it. It's funny when you – now, my kids haven't really been out that much. But when you get – whether you're walking or doing something around town, when you pass somebody and you're and a child's with you, they look at them like they're these the carriers of this deadly disease, like almost like Ebola. Like people run the other way because they've been told that the kids are – you know they don't get it, but they're they're the ones that are transmitting the disease. So it's basically, stay away from little kids because they're the they're the they're the the enemy, and you don't want anything to come from them because they're the ones that are the worst. It's not true. And when I see little kids with masks on, I, I think to the parents, you know, could you just read up? You don't really, you know, you, you, that doesn't help. It doesn't matter. I mean, your kids are are good. They're good. I mean, once in a while, you read a story about a you know sixteen year old who has the coronavirus. And then you read, you know, down in the 27th paragraph that they're going through, you know, chemo or that they've had some major surgery and their immunities are down. There uh, is always an underlying condition. And I, I, I mean, every day there are more of these facts that just stop you in your tracks. Like yesterday, I was reading that the average death of the coronavirus occurs in some and, and people five years older than their life expectancy. So that's like 80, whatever, 82, right. 83. Well, it's 82 um, in Massachusetts right now, 82 right? Mass, and I believe the life expectancy is you know, 77. So they're dying five years older than they were expected to live by the actuarial tables. Mm -hmm. Or in, um, in England, they determined that 95% of those who died, including elderly, had a serious underlying condition. In Italy, the average death had three uh, other things that f three other fatal illnesses, potentially fatal illnesses, when they died. Three. These are people, and their average age in Italy was what eighty-one. I right. mean, it is tragic. It is awful. There are you know a generation is being stricken here, but there is no reason for your five-year-old or your eight-year-old or your 12-year-old to, to, first of all, to hide at home, second, to be out of school, thirdly, to have a mask on and acting as if any minute now the, the virus is going to get them, you know, like the boogeyman around the corner. It is yeah, not. It isn't going to happen. It is. And, and the, and the crazy thing is now in, with, with the homeschooling and the teachers are doing almost triple the work because you have to do these lesson plans and then do them online and you do the zoom chats and, and you feel bad for all of that. The other good, the one good thing that comes out of this is that we should, and my, my wife said this is that there should never, ever be another snow day for kids <laughs> because now you're, you're, you can do this at home. So now we don't have to alter our summer vacations forever. If we ever get a snow day, you just, you're able to zoom chat and there, there you go. There you have you it. You think your kids will go back to school this year because I don't, they should, but they won't. I mean, here's the problem is, and well, you know, we talk about this every day. There are government officials, not just the mayors and governors, but there are people, their staffs and their advisors, who aren't thinking straight. They're not thinking, are, if we send these kids back to school, will they get sick? Will they bring the virus home? They're thinking, how do I cover my ass? It is th this whole thing from coast to coast and border to border is about public officials 
covering their ass. They're all afraid. And I, and I give, you know, the governor of uh, uh, Georgia, the governor of Florida, I give them a, a lot of credit. They have guts. We don't have that kind of public official up here in, in New England. We certainly don't in Massachusetts. They don't in New York. God knows they don't in Maine. I will get to that that nitwit governor of Maine. It, it was just an embarrassment. But do you think they're making informed decisions? Because I don't. I think when they're making these decisions, they are not considering all the facts. They're considering the optics. How is this going to look? Well, I think that the the main concern is no one wants the uh, the death of someone on their on their conscience right. or on their resume. And if they're waiting for a vaccine or some sort of cure to happen before they get people back into the schools full time, then no, they won't be in school the rest of this year. And, and that's and just not going to happen. You know, and, someone would say, "Why not? What would it be? Well, we don't want to take a chance. A chance of they don't want to take a chance. They don't want to change. Chance, chance of chance what? Of oh, he's gonna, uh, teachers, uh, or if they have elderly that live in their homes, if like well, grandma and grandpa live with you, they don't want to have that on their hands. They're, they're not supposed to be. You're su the elderly are supposed to be isolated already. We're not mm -hmm. supposed to be taking a chance. Secondly, there's very little evidence of kids getting the virus or transferring the virus. Very little evidence that that's occurring. Um, you shouldn't be, they shouldn't be with elderly anyway. You shouldn't be with elderly. It's sad. Mm -hmm. I live near a, uh, a senior housing facility and we used to walk by and they would be gathered in these, um, these common areas, you know, the lobby. And then each floor has a common area, like a lounge. And you look in the window and they'd be, you know, talking or whatever, you know, playing games they're empty now. They're not allowed out of their rooms. That is brutal. That is sad. I can't imagine living your life at that age or any age, and you can't leave your room. You ha can't have visitors. I mean, thank God for you know cable TV. You know, thank right. God for uh, for FaceTime, Facebook, uh, whatever. Uh, thank God for you know telephones. I mean, I can't imagine a hundred years ago going through this where they couldn't leave their rooms and they had nothing. Anyway, it is awful. It is brutal. I feel awful for them. But if they're isolated, then their grandkids could and should be going to school. Simple as that. And uh, I ask this every day. I said, just tell me why you're doing something. Why are we wearing face masks? Why are we uh, forced inside at night? Why is there a curfew? Is there a reason? And I want to talk to you because, you, you know, you're a golfer and you've been paying attention to this <laughs> about golf. And, it's, and, and every time I do this, I tweet about golf. I did this yesterday. They, they had a map of how many places I've opened up golf courses. And most of the country, they've opened them up. The governor, whoever, the local officials have said, why not? This is not, you know, golf is not, you know, basketball. It's not, uh, uh, you know, football. It's not, it, there is no reason to stop people from going out to a golf course. People are, are bored. They need to get out of the house. They're losing their minds. Golf is a perfect Thing, a perfect activity, but it's not all of the country who's allowed golf. It, it, it's coming along. Yesterday in Maine, I'm no, uh, yeah, tomorrow in Maine, they're opening courses. In uh, Connecticut, they're open. In New Jersey, I think today they're open. But every time I tweet about this, I get all these responses that drive me nuts. So if you're tweeting at me about this, I'll give you credit. You've succeeded in driving me nuts. I get. <laughs> In, immediately, I get the tweets saying, "You, you know, so uh, you you can't play golf. Tough luck. All you want to do is play golf. I have no intention of playing golf. At least not in Massachusetts. I don't do it often. I have no intention. I have no one to play with. I have nowhere to go. It is not about golf. I get these other tweets mute that just, I, I, I'm sorry, they drive me crazy. The first tweet I got yesterday when I when I said, in Massachusetts, they are not." Um, uh, zero percent co courses open because our governor believes enjoying yourself spreads the virus. That's how stupid it is. Our governor is so scared. He's so afraid to look callous. He's so afraid to look uh, careless, reckless, that he will not allow people to play golf, even though there's no zero threat of transferring the virus when you play golf under the current rules. So yeah, I have a tough time with this. You're looking oh, at... Just let me finish here. First tweet I get is, there's no reason to play golf, Jerry. Second tweet I get, there's no reason you should play golf. And those drive me... The, 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 that's not the question. That should never be the question. The question should be, is there a reason 
you shouldn't play golf. I mean, last I checked, Mute, this is America. We used to feel, you know, like we were free people. And we used to think when we were told to do something or not to do something, we need a reason. I'm not planning on playing golf. I don't know about you, but I'm not planning. On, I have. I mean, it's not like I'm itching here with the clubs. Re, you know, wearing my golf shoes, itching to get out there. It's principle. Yep. How how can people react to a governor closing the golf courses, and their first reaction is, "Why do you have to play golf? What's the purpose?" That's not the question. The question I, is, why can't you? Why shouldn't you? Why is the government stopping me? That's I the question. I find that interesting in the in the aspect of why people feel it necessary to tell you that you you can't play golf. Meaning that the, the people that tweet back at you that that golfing is going to kill people because you go out and uh, and do that, but you're putting people at risk by doing that. New Jersey is the state that's probably the most infected state right now, right. and they open up the golf courses. You're outside, do you're exercising. There's w- ways in which the golf courses. Um, can set up the the course where you don't even there's no sharing of anything you're you're walking further apart and if you play probably like uh like you do where you're spraying it to the right and to the left you're not in the fairway or crossing paths with a lot of people very often and they, you can do it. zero zero chance mute zero I, chance they're not i want to play golf i mean like I, I, belong to, I, have a that I belong to and i would love to be out there i keep getting updates from them and i i know that they're pressing the governor to try at least from the emails that i'm getting that they're sending uh they're trying to pressure the governor and to open up the courses and especially when the weather gets nice this is there's no reason to to not be out there i, I really find the biggest thing Jerry that you said is the 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 civil liberties that you're allowed to have like to at some point with the whole reason we got into this there's two reasons right you're protecting the the elderly and you didn't want to overwhelm the hospitals and when you're looking at 8% of of covid uh, cases are hospitalized right now in the state of massachusetts then what exactly is the message now? Because it seems to be changing because it's not fitting the narrative in which they want us all to stay in and telling us what we need and have to do. And and I just, ha- at some point, at some point, you have to be able to let people live because you're, there's never 100% certainty that you can't get sick. There's never right. 100% certainty that you can't get hit by a freaking car. And, and uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. There's a better chance if you're you know under 60 and you're not s- obese, there's a better chance if you went to work today that you would get killed on your way to work than you would get killed by the virus. You know, there's there's less than one percent chance. There's less than one tenth of one percent chance if you're if you're Dave Colonnade's age and and, and as skinny as he is that you're going to get killed by this. It's not going to happen. And I think more people. I hope more people are understanding this. But it disappoints me as an American to get those tweets. And I shouldn't say this because I'll get more of them saying, why do you need to golf? That is not the freaking question. Why The question is, why is the governor, an alleged Republican, by the way, why is the governor not allowing me? And by the way, when people say it's a frivolous activity, who cares? Why do you care about golf? I just looked this up, Mute and Dave. I just looked this up. In Massachusetts, not the, mo- you know, not the hotbed for golf. We, you know, we're not you know, North Carolina here. We're not Hilton Head. There are 25,500 in people employed in the golf industry, 25,000. Wow. And they're all right now out of work. They're furloughed, laid off, sitting at home, 25,000. These little, you know, nannies, you know, the, the, the out there say, no way, we'll stay home. Don't take a chance. They don't give a damn about these 25,000 people or their families like that. They could flip a switch. The governor could say, go play. We already know the rules. Only one person per car. Don't touch the flag stick. Don't shake hands at the end of your round. You no, know we, we know the rules, but the majority of people who don't know the sport don't know that it's probably the easiest sport to play while socially distancing. Well, I've, I've tweeted it. I've read it. It's everywhere. If you're going to play, they're going to tell you as soon as you you know, pay and go to the first tee, you're going to be told oh. one person per car, don't touch the flag. You know, the, the, these are simple thing, things. Stay six feet apart. It well, is safe. It is good for home? you. And, 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 Again, most of the country, I think the number was, you know, 80 something or 90 percent. They've already done this. They've op- And you point out New Jersey, which was one of the hardest hit places. They've said no. their governor, by the way, a Democrat, their Democrat governor said, finally, why are we not allowing this again? Why are we keeping people 
uh, from going to work in the golf industry? Why are we not allowing people to get out of their houses and take a walk with a golf club in their hand? In Massachusetts, however, no, not allowed because our governor is he's uh, drunk with power right now and he's enjoying this and he's looking for ways rather than looking for ways to solve this problem, get people back to work. He's thinking, how can I keep people trapped at home? Because he's enjoying this. Our mayor in Boston is enjoying this. They are powerful and they are, in, and, and, and they're aroused by their authority. I mean, they just passed, they're passing laws in Massachusetts and various towns and cities that you can get fined three hundred dollars for going outside without a mask. Now, yeah, and then they get the, well. The thing is, uh, they keep they keep moving the goalposts. Like, right, what are the goals, and then they don't tell us. They just order us and, and don't really tell us. And then the best part is they get out and and it's all for the, the greater good and saving everyone's life. And they mobilize and they empower the social warriors who I enjoy that get on there. And when they see someone walking without a mask, they either they either choose to confront them or they take it to a social media site and be like, I was outside and someone had the nerve to not have a mask on. And then they publicly shame people. Or if kids are playing in a park and, and three other kids happen to meet them, they're calling the cops on them. It, it's it's the, the social justice warriors that come out because oh, of they're the worst. They're, they're basically, we're, we've just added to the law enforcement of the area. Now that you have like spies or you can maybe, you know, even call them uh, the, what are the, narcs? Or, narcs, the uh, neighborhood narcs. The the neighborhood neighborhood parents. Yeah, we've empowered all the hall monitors from high school to to get their, their junior G badge and go out and start uh, issuing tickets or calling out the, the people of the world who are breaking the laws because it makes them feel great and empowered. Good for them. And, and many of them are getting caught on, uh, you know, with cell phones, the, you know, yelling at kids in the park or the cops. There were yeah. a couple of unbelievable, you know, uh, uh, videos yesterday of the cops they went to one woman's house and they they wanted to write her a citation because she let her kid have a friend over like a neighborhood friend i forget mm. how old the kid was like 10 so they had a, another kid over to play and the cops came because someone complained and they were trying to write her up and the woman wouldn't give her or wouldn't give the cops her name she's like i did nothing wrong and she videotaped it and posted it and it embarrasses the police i am disappointed in the police when they enforce these frivolous, these irrational uh, rules, laws, whatever you want to call them, I hope that you know they just tell people, put your mask on because our mayor's an idiot, uh, you know, and rather than writing up a ticket, which is absurd. I mean, there's no evidence that when you're out for a run by yourself that you're transferring the virus or getting the virus. There's none, and people don't care. They don't want to hear about it. They just want to say, you know, why not? Why not do what you're told? It is so disappointing. I think, I think, mute that the tide is turning. I feel like more people are getting uh, frustrated with this overreach, with this, with this government overreach, and you're going to see it this weekend because in California. Their idiot governor, that you know, that 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 soap Newsom. opera star Gavin Newsom, he's handsome. Um, yeah, he's very very handsome. He's, and his hair, he's got nice hair. I'm, Great I, hair. I'm Great jealous. Hair. But and he was okay for a while, but he's feeling it too, man. He's feel like the friggin' Burgermeister Meister Burger. You know, he's ready to outlaw toys. You know, toys. he wants to out. He he has uh, brought down a new decree. No one on the beaches. Or parks, state parks and beaches are closed this weekend. You saw, and you know why? Because people went to the beach last weekend. They had a heat wave and people walked on the beach and people, you know, just went out for some air. People, I think some people actually went in for a swim. You want to talk about crimes against humanity. They went in and rode some waves. Well, this fool, Gavin Newsom, has decided they're going to close all the beaches. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but California's got a few beaches and state parks. And instead of letting people, encouraging people to take a walk on the beach or walk in the park, knowing it's not really endangering anybody, he's going to close the beaches and force the cops to start, you know, or, I don't know, arresting people, harassing people. There's going to be arrests because you know what, people are always. There's always going to be somebody who says, "Screw you, I'm not leaving the beach until you know you can arrest me," and they're going to have to arrest them. And everybody has a phone, so get ready for the videos this weekend of people being harassed on the beach. I talked about this yesterday. There's a video of uh, cops on horseback in an L.A. beach. There's a 93-year-old couple sitting in chairs, little beach chairs, 
And the cops tell them, you could stay, but you can't sit in chairs. You're only allowed to sit on the sand. He makes two 93-year-olds get out of their chairs and sit on the sand. <laughs> now, that cop, I'm just going to say it. I'm very pro-cop. That yeah. cop is an asshole. That cop should be ashamed of himself, making two elderly people, who, by the way, I'm surprised they're out. Maybe they're just saying, screw it. You know, we, you know if, we, if, if it gets us, it gets us. Or maybe they know that when you go to the beach, run. Yeah, I know. When you go to the beach, there's really no danger of getting the virus. So they went to the beach and brought the, and they were little chairs, just those little beach chairs. And the friggin' uh, asshole cop says, you can sit on the sand. I'm more concerned if you're going to get arrested for this is like, what kind of street cred do you have in the prisons? Like you got murderers, you got burglars, no, no, no. you got rape. No, no, like, where, no, no. where do you stand? No, like, dude, no, no. I fought, the, I fought the cops. I didn't, I didn't, I went to the beach, man. Do you think like they like let you into the like white supremacist gang in there? If like you <laughs> tell them that you, that you like went to the beach. Just, yeah, just man, to be clear. <laughs> just to be clear, mute those murderers and rapists you talk about. Yeah. They're, they're all, they've all been set free. They're, they're not in prison anymore. They're gone. I thought those were just the drug the drug dealers. I thought <laughs> no, they, those were the ones. No, that no, were no, no. Rapists, child molesters, they're gone because, you know, the virus. So they let them go. And now the uh, people who won't leave the beach or the people who went surfing when they weren't allowed to go surfing, um, they're in jail. So, it, you know, it all makes sense now. It's uh, it's. Uh, See, if this, I was a, going back to the uh, the the lady that that ratted on the the ten year old kid coming over, if if that was my neighbor, I'm the type of asshole that would put my kids because I four of them, I would put them all out into the neighborhood and have them roll in their lawn and touch their mailboxes, like <laughs> visually, like just go through just to see who came out and started cleaning. And then once you saw who started cleaning, once the sun went down, there's going to be some egging going on at some point. It, it, it's going to be, and it's it's going to get worse for some of these people because they don't care what the tr facts are. The truth is, and they're getting bored, and they're getting crazier and edgier. So they're going to be, you know, knocking out your kids. And I think it's getting worse in some states. Obviously, some states are opening it up. Opening up. Georgia opened last week. This week, there's a whole bunch. Florida is the uh, the model for the country, and the governor DeSantis was was feeling it yesterday. I mean, he was pointing the finger and blaming the media because all the predictions and we did, we thought so here that, that they have so many elderly mm -hmm. that they were going to get hit hard. You know, they have people, transient people flying in and out. We thought Florida was going to get crushed. Florida is, it's not even close. Florida has done unbelievable. They isolated their elderly. They had, you know, some rules. They did the social distancing. They are coming out of this. Uh, I'll take a look at it right now. I got my, uh, coronavirus tally in front of me by state. Yeah. Massachusetts has 60,000 cases, 3,400 deaths. Florida, 33,000 cases, 1,200 deaths. They have one-third the deaths. They have, I believe it's one to four times the population and many, many more elderly. It is remarkable what Florida has done. But some of the places, it is it is amazing and bizarre that we eat one size fits all. We have these rules, and it's changing. But for the whole country, like we all have to live by New York's rules. We all we all have to react because of the tragedy in New York. Now, New York, obviously, they have an idiot mayor. They have an idiot governor. The governor was sending coronavirus patients into nursing homes, killing people. They have the subway, you know, they have people living on top of people. They have lots of homeless. They have lots of reasons things were so bad in New York. For some reason, public officials, mayors, governors say, uh oh, look what happened in New York. Let's shut down, you know, Maine or Wyoming or North Dakota. There are more, there are more people have died in Nassau County on Long Island, one county, than in California, which has 40 million people. I mean, it's a whole different world when you get beyond New York, New Jersey, and, you know, parts of New England. The best example of how stupid these mayors, governors have been, I think, and, and Tucker Carlson has done this a couple times, is uh, highlight Maine. Now, I know Maine. You know Maine. It's very rural. I think there's, whatever, million, 1.3 million people in Maine, which is like a city block in New York. Right. Their governor is out of control, Janet Mills, out of control, shutting down the state, threatening people with arrest, um, shutting down hotels. She won't allow hotels to take reservations, even for the future. Like if someone calls and says, I want to book a room for the 4th of July, 
not allowed. That's against the rules for some reason. You know, shutting down summer camps, telling them they can't open this summer. This is April. It's saying you can't shutting down churches. There are right now in Maine, the state of Maine, which is huge, a lot of land, but not a lot of people. 33 people are being treated for coronavirus. 33. 30, one, like one wing of one hospital. That's it. And the whole state must be shut down. Companies, businesses, industries, whole industries, schools must be shut down. They've had a total of, I can look this up because I got it right in front of me, a total of, where is Maine, Maine, Maine? What happens when the re revolution happens here? When people just, you know, Maine? start Hold walking on, Let me finish this mute. 52 deaths. 52 in the entire state in the last, whatever it is, six, seven, eight weeks. In the out of state, 1.3 1 1 million people. Out of 1.3 million people, the entire state, 52 deaths. Right now, 33 people being treated. Now, can you tell me that, I mean, I realize this governor is nuts. She loves this control. She loves her authority. She wants to uh, flex her muscles every day. Can you tell me what sense that makes to shut down the entire state, which is dependent in large part on the summer, on the summer season, on the tourist industry? They can't go to work. They can't make money. They can't survive because this lunatic governor is afraid of what? I love this. The next wave. Well, what? Jerry, they have even have a first wave. Well, yeah, exactly. The next wave is, but they've always said this in politics, right? Never let a good crisis go to Correct. waste. So Hillary said that Hillary said that two days ago when she yeah. was with Biden. She said, "So let, this let, is let their let chance because there's we're we're not spending our time watching the NBA or NHL playoffs or or the Major League Baseball or even you know watching golf. We're spending our time watching press conferences, reading up about COVID, and listening to our." politicians and our local politicians this is their grand stage this is their opportunity to be known and recognized as the 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 social warrior that saved you this state and saved this country and now that you know that governor is going to say well we only had 52 people die and you're like yeah and then we only lost 20,000 uh workers to this or we only closed these many businesses they won't use that they'll use the opportunity to say but we saved lives you and if you're a, a callous son of a bitch that wants to say well people need to do that and you want to say that it's better that people died then that's on your shoulders it's not on mine because i saved lives Think about it, Mute. She could say everything she did was right because look, only 52 died. Right, only right. And in New York, where there's, you know, whatever, I'll get you the number if you want right now. In New York, where it's been bad, and in New York City, not the whole state, yeah. but where 23,000 people have died in New York, 300,000 cases. Um, that mayor, that idiot, could say it would have been so much worse if, you know, if you didn't do what I said, of course, it, it, they did what he said initially, which was go out, go on the subway, go to restaurants, go to parades. He, they listened. He changed his mind and then went the other way. And now he's threatening to round up the Jewish people. I don't Oof, know if they, if they that go, is not a good look for the that was, not, that was not a good look, but he doesn't care. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a radical. And he's he, unbelievable. He's <laughs> He'll say so the reality here is they've done an amazing job. It's and the media done an amazing job. at scaring the shit out of people. Correct. There was yes. a poll. There was a poll last night, and it was I think it said seventy five percent of the country would prefer to keep social distancing, even if that meant hurting the economy uh, even more than it is now. And it was you know what I mean. And it was only fifteen percent said open the economy back up. What percentage of people that have never run a business that have never had. That, that, that I get it, but you see those, they you see those numbers. Job. And when you go out, and this is the this is the hypocrisy of the whole thing that pisses me off. It's you started out where okay, now you're uh, a uh, you know a xenophobe because you're closing. You should be out. You know you're closing China. You shouldn't be doing this. Uh, you shouldn't be going out and doing this. And then all of a sudden, the next week, you switch to 1.2 million people are going to die. So then you throw that on people's laps and then and then they live with that panic. And now everything since anything under 1.2 million people, every politician claims is a W. Correct. Right. A and then today, saved lives. today we got Trump who's on Twitter, uh, like uh, taunting Sweden because Sweden didn't lock down. Mm -hmm. And Sweden's done unbelievably well uh, when you consider they didn't destroy their economy. I think we're all going to look back someday and say Sweden was right. 
Uh, but Trump is like adding up the deaths in Sweden and comparing them to the deaths in Norway and saying, see, Sweden did it wrong because Sweden didn't do what we did. And he's he's rationalizing and it's stupid as right. Trump's treat as Trump's tweets often are. But I think, you know, I think in this country, we're going to look at Florida and say whatever they did, they did right. And New York, whatever they did, they did wrong, including what Cuomo did, sending coronavirus patients into nursing homes, which is so bizarre and so insane that I hope people remember what he did because he literally, uh, he, he's the one with blood on his hands. My but question, I, Jerry, but Dave's you. Right, Dave's right. They scared people. He's the best example of it too, by the way. A couple of weeks ago, he was. we did this Facebook Live and, and you and I were on the screen and Dave was under the desk. We couldn't see him. He was hiding, <laughs> shaking, <laughs> shivering. Jokes and and it was kind of his voice was kind of muffled because he had two three face masks on at the same time can't be too safe yeah he had a face mask on and he had one of those space suits on because they scared him the media you know in in cahoots with our foolish elected officials had you thinking that the virus was like a you know like a scary monster outside just waiting the second you stuck your face out your front door it was going to attack you. But now you know that's all nonsense, correct? I took, I took early precautions, right? I listened to guidance and I reacted appropriately. Now, in more information has come out and I am learning. And as we go here, the frustration is building clearly. Even yesterday, I was at my parents' house staying six feet away. My sister and her kids show up. She's scared shitless. Like every time I came within 20 feet, she's freaking out. That's the majority of the country. And, it, and the reality is these politicians see those numbers. They see 75% of people scared shitless. And they, they want you scared because you're, you know, subservient, submissive. And when you're scared, you do what you're told. But here, here's the other thing we're learning. And, and uh, we saw the video yesterday where the uh, Michelle Obama told people, stay home. Don't go out. Don't move. Don't breathe. And at the same time, her husband was out playing golf against the rules in Virginia. I think it was Virginia. Come on. It is, of course. At an empty course, because the course was closed, and some some beautiful person had a camera uh, from the distance, and on an empty course, Barack Obama's teeing it up playing golf. <laughs> These people are such hypocrites. The Chicago mayor told people they could not get their hair cut, closed all beauty salons and barbershops. The next day was caught in a beauty salon getting special treatment, and, and then she said – you know, I have to do that. My hair is important. I mean, these these are hypocrites. The Virginia governor, the loathsome, you know, Governor Klansman there, he said you couldn't leave your, your house. The next day he was uh, seen at his uh, beach house in North Carolina. They're all friggin' hypocrites. They don't really, the, the biggest hypocrite of all, Bill Gates, big climate change guy, you know, the world, the, the seas are rising, we're all going to die. He just bought a $43 million beach house in Southern California, right on the water, right on the water. So do you really think Bill Gates thinks the seas are rising and going to kill us all? No, it's all, they're all full of it. They're all hypocrites. And people are learning that. I think I, I'm discouraged, as I said, Mew. When I, I, get, I, when I, I don't blame tweet, you. I get discouraged when people say, are you crazy? You know, you, you're going to kill uh, grandma. Uh, I, I get discouraged when people don't really understand the threat. But then again, I think more and more people every day are getting frustrated. And you mentioned, you know, business owners, and they're the most frustrated of all because they're seeing their 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 life's work going down the tubes, and they don't know why. They're saying, why, you know, why can't I go out there, with, you know, with my construction company or with my whatever, my pizza place? You right. know, why why am I being forced by the government to lose everything I've worked for? Those I, are the most frustrated people, and I don't blame them. I see the frustration with 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 all of these, and and it's funny because uh, there was there was a video. I think it was in Australia where there was a bunch of people that were normal people that were basically mocking all the celebrities that were going out and right. saying thank you to staying home. They're like, now I'm poor and kicked out of my house because I can't work, and thank you, celebrity, for for all your sacrifices that you made and done this. And I, I the thing that the thing that still baffles me in this in this whole thing is one the the mortality rate is starting as more and more testing is being done you're starting to find the mortality rate the fact that people are still believe that if you get corona that you're going to die is such a poor misconception and such a scare tactic that is just wrong and basically it's it's unfair to people that they're actually thinking and doing this and then the other thing that that I just I just can't wrap my arms around and I don't understand how this works is that 
people genuinely want to see states like Georgia and Florida fail. They're generally yes. cheering yes. for people right. to die or people to get sick so that they can stand on their pulpit and say, see, I told you so. And to me, that is the most ridiculous thing in the world. Why would you cheer for that? One Don't reason. you want One your reason. life back to where it was? One reason, I'll give you a hint. He's six foot three, 249 pounds, and orange. Okay, that's the reason they this was a gift from the gods. If you're hoping to bring down Trump and you have a government job or you have a job, uh, a job on network TV, if you're Chuck Todd or Don Lemon, all or, or Mika and Joe, all they want is to bring down Trump. Yeah, so they're not giving up anything, sacrificing anything, and they see that this is hurting him. You know, obviously the economy's in the tank, unemployment is, is, is growing. I mean, it's 26 million now, and today we get uh, more, more. So it'll be over yeah. 30 million in the last month. It's going to be uh, insane, but they're okay with it because it hurt big bad orange man, and they don't really have a candidate. You know, they have a bumbling old fool. In the uh, in the throes of dementia, that they're right. going to put up against them, they need to hurt. They need this to hurt Trump. And if Georgia, if things go fine in Georgia, and I think they will, uh, if things go fine, continue to go well in Florida, and I think they will. That hurts. You know, that hurts Biden. That hurts Don Lemon. You know, that hurts Joe and Mika. There, you're right, man. Last week when they opened Georgia, and the people at those hair salons and nails, they were tense. It was ner they're nervous. They're hoping it all were. There are so many people in this country and the entire mainstream media, the entire Democrat Party who were rooting against them, which right. is amazing because those are people. I mean, that is, those are red blooded Americans, man. They don't want to sit home and collect, you know, their six hundred dollars extra and their unemployment. They want to go back to work. They want to build their business. They, you know, they want to, uh, to achieve the American dream. Right. We should all be rooting for them. Right. And that's the thing that that baffles me. I'm, I, I, you know, I was looking up and I'm sorry because I wanted to see jobless claims usually come out at 830 today and I may have missed them to see how many people are out of work again or claims were filed this week. But you 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 watch this and you, people want to be employed. People want to go out and work and cheering against them and cheering for them to 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 be sick and, and is just is just not the American way. And I just don't understand why why people feel the need to to you know, to push that narrative. Also, it's like you're, you're talking about the financial repercussions that the market has not, you know, has retraced, mo you know, 20 some percent of the losses that it had from the lows. So the, the, the stock market is not, is not, is it's not almost 25,000, right? Right. Yeah, so, yeah. So you look at that and people are like, well, it, it can't be that bad. This shelter in place. Well, it's great for the environment. It's doing all these other things. Let's just stay home and do all these other things. And we'll live in this perfect utopia, except for the fact that I'm trapped in my house for now the seventh or eighth and, week. And, 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 you know, we mention this all the time, but let's be honest, there's going to be those issues. There's going to be, you know, more alcoholism and drug addiction and domestic abuse. There's lots of unintended consequences <laughs> to a, uh, an extended shutdown. You know, there, it, it's not in, again, the, the world where, you know, where Barack Obama tells people not to leave their house and then goes and plays 36. That's not the world we're talking about. We're talking about people looking at their bank balance saying, are we going to be able to afford, you know, this apartment, this house saying, when can I go back to work? Or, or, you know, what else they're asking now is why can't I go back to work? I, I work construction. Why can't I go out there and, and build, you know, I'm a painter. Why can't I go out there and, and paint houses? I mean, there are people who just don't understand why well, do you want to be a sheep or do you want to be a shepherd? There are a lot of sheep out there that will listen to someone that will stand like sit on a pulpit like this and be like, you need to stay home. If you don't, your grandparents, your parents, your loved ones are going to die. Your kids are going to die. Uh, sorry, I got a tea time uh, down the street that I got to go play, but because I, I can do that because I'm more important. I'm just here to tell you what you need to do. You follow what I say, but I'm going to do what's right because I'm above this and I don't need to do that. Are uh, you uh, you want to follow that, or do you want to listen to that the rest of your life and, and be and be manipulated by people that think that they know more and they're smarter than you, and they're going to tell you what to do because yeah, that's that's the way to live life. It's 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 so un-American to just sit there and say, "Tell me what to do." Don't explain it to me. Just tell me yep. you know what to do, and and I'll do it. That's un-American. Damn it! But 
I'll tell you what else is on American is, is another 3 million unemployed. So once you look at the number, I think I, I think I see the number, look it up. We'll get it. It's bad news. It's, it's more bad news, but, uh, but not Perfect. unexpected. It's this is not you unexpected. Expected these to, to to keep going on, and that's. But at some point, um, everyone is looking into this, and and even and Charlie Baker was obviously getting a lot of heat for the, the golf course thing one, but a lot of heat from these these business owners being like, at some point we got to be we got to let us go, and you know I've heard rumblings of when they're going to open you know Boston up for for what I'm for my work and stuff like that and it's still not for a long time oh, um, and you know what I I got friends and small businesses and one thing they're all afraid of or bitching about is this six hundred dollars extra in unemployment and there are people they had working for them they were hoping to get them back as soon as the shutdown ended and some of them were like I'm good because they're getting more to not work yeah. And that's, you know, the Democrats fought for that. You know, Bernie Sanders was screaming about that and Liz Warren. That's insane. People need, you know, they were all set to go back to work. These were good employees. And my guy, you know, guys I've talked to, they don't really blame them. They say they're going to stay out until the end of July. They can make more to not work than to work. And once the weather's nice, you know, once they're allowed to play golf, go to the beach, that's going to be a tough sell. But you get, you check the stock market and those unemployment numbers mute. I got I'm it. I'm going to tell you about Shea Concrete. And they're, you know, they got that problem too. They got a lot of great employees, but they have some who uh, are making more not to work. And that can be an issue, but they got enough to keep, to keep busy and to take care of you homeowners and home builders out there. Did you know that my brother-in-law, Greg, and the good folks at Shake Concrete have a huge selection of precast concrete steps? This is the spring project you've been thinking about. This is the spring project you need. It makes all the sense in the world. You're trapped inside. You know what? They can do this work outside. Whether you're building a new home or you need to replace an old staircase, Shea has great values with designs for any home available in concrete or customized with beautiful stone, granite, and brick. A new staircase can dramatically upgrade the front entrance of your home. It can make it look better when you have those pictures for your uh, uh, your simulated, your virtual graduation or your virtual uh, uh, party, uh, Mother's Day, Father's Day uh, party with, you know, just a few people. Less than 10, can't have more than 10. You can have them, have those pictures, the prom pictures outside the house on the steps. Get new steps. In most cases, they're good folks at Shea can remove your old stairs and have you walking up your new front steps within hours. This is the project you're, you've been waiting for. This is the way to upgrade things and do it easy and do it quick. Call Shea Concrete. You can learn more about Shea's precast concrete steps at SheaConcrete.com. That's SheaConcrete.com. Uh, give, uh, give us the damage, mutant man. 3.84 million Americans file for unemployment that's, benefits. That's even, you, know what the number, you know what the total is now? What do you, what's 30. Your, th 30. Yeah, you saw it, son of a bitch. No, I said 26 earlier. I did the math. I did it in my own head. Is, it is. 30 million 30 Americans million. are unemployed. Because and when you watch the news, and I just say you flip on CNN by mistake or, or the network news, or you watch the Sunday shows, ask yourself if any of those people – give a shit of about those 30 million. They probably don't know any of those 30 million, you know, unless their pool boy got mm -hmm. laid off. They don't know. They don't care. I don't, you know, obviously governors and mayors care about unemployment numbers, but they care more about their power. And do they need me now? Am I more important now? When you look at a guy like de Blasio and you hear him, you say, or, or Gavin Newsom, tell me they're not aroused by this whole uh, you know, crisis situation where their job is much more important. Their decisions are much more vital to the day-to-day -day operation of the city or the state. They're loving this, and it's disgusting. All right, I got a question for you two guys. Ooh, this is going to uh, be good. I mean, I they, got a couple of questions. they sell you with sick. They sell you with sickness and death, Jerry. It scares the hell out of you. No, oh, and but more people are realizing that it's not let that 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 asshole Cuomo <laughs> who put. <laughs> coronavirus patients in nursing homes. This drives me crazy. I mean, it's the last thing in the world you should do. He's it's a hero. so insane. He forced them to do it. He lied about why they couldn't go somewhere else, why they couldn't go to that ship, which, by the way, the comfort is still empty, as far as we know. But Cuomo put people in, and he, and he was asked about people going back to work. Why can't people go back to work? 
you know, in wherever, construction companies or you know, landscapers, why can't they go back to work? And he says they have to stay home because the alternative is death. And he said it all dramatically. It was like he was reading like, you know, like a movie line. He thinks he's Al Pacino, by the way, up there reading a script. The alternative is death. So if, you know, my friend, the, the paver, goes back to work paving a parking lot, the alternative, he's going to die? Yep. I mean, it's just dumb. It's wrong. And fortunately, again, I'm trying to look at the bright side. I think more people are, are, are catching up, reading up, and understanding more. And they're saying, why is he going to die? What are you talking about? The alternative is death. If you put a coronavirus patient in a nursing home yeah, and you kill them like you did, governor, but if the guy goes to pave a parking lot or or goes to uh, an office like you and, and, and goes to work, why are you going to die? But Jerry, who's the question is though, who's the dumb one? Him for saying it or for the other people that believe it? If you're not going to be educated right. enough to get the information or to rely on it, or rely on what someone else is telling you and just accept that as fact, who's the idiot? I mean, it's, it's not him. You're right. It's not him. He's a tyrant. He's an authoritarian. He's loving this. He's smart. He's, yeah. he's devious. He, you know, he's not dumb. He's enjoying this. And he thinks that works. Well, it's well, our guys, job to you, hold them accountable. Isn't it if, our if job? You people to go to work, work. You're going to die. Oh, man, I better not go. But isn't it our job to hold our, our politicians and elected officials responsible? Yes. We're the ones that are, we put them there. We're the ones that are supposed to hold their feet to the fire. So the fact that they're asking us to not question it and to not, to not push them goes against everything that we stand for. We're supposed, we put you in there to represent us, not for you to sit there and tell us what to do, but to do the best interest of everyone as a whole. And when you tell people that they're going to die because they go out, it's irresponsible it's irrational and it's also you're creating hysteria and when you do that stuff then it's completely outside the realm of your job and your qualifications but well, we're the yeah, asshole that put it in there. so we have only ourselves to blame and we do we got you know ed markey and liz warren we're the worst up here we're the worst of them all but they're pretty bad in new york too uh, let me tell you they got you know schumer and gerald nadler and Al and cuomo <laughs> and de blasio the Bla can you tell how does why would, he why would any Jewish now? person ever vote for de Blasio? I guarantee he got the majority of the Jewish vote, and now he's threatening to round up Jews if they go to you know funerals and they don't keep their distance. But could I, you I imagine gotta, if could you imagine if DJT said that? Now I, I mean I don't I, I tweeted wrong. that very he thing some really said. dumb shit. He yeah. does, does some really dumb stuff. But if Trump said what de Blasio said, there would be an absolute uprising. There would be an uprising. And I just I couldn't believe it when I read it. And the it whole be, I, I know you have to read it a couple of times to believe it. Yeah. And, and you're right. If, if Trump said this. If Trump said it, it would be the biggest story for weeks. And what if you replaced Jews? And he said, you know, the Jewish community, he targeted them and said he will arrest them if they gather and they don't social distance, if they gather in crowds. If you replace Jewish community, if you placed it with Muslim or or oh. gay or, you know, you name it, you know, even Fill in the blank, uh, you know, almost any Democrat or, or transgender. I mean, he would first of all, he would never do that because de Blasio is a total stooge of the you know, identity politics, but it's somehow acceptable for him to target the Jewish community, which is disgusting, but he's a disgusting uh, public official. All right, here's my question for you. I don't even, I think Dave's busy uh, fighting with people on Facebook Live. I can, are, I can multitask. I can fight with turtle riders. How we are, uh, turtle, turtle riders are out again. We, you know, we don't do enough for that. Well, we, here's the deal. We promote all this. Oh, here story. we go. We him. He's, he's great at what he does. <laughs> I love the the work he's been doing lately with these pedo pedo let me, poachers. Let me deal with Turtle Boy and the Turtle Riders, all right? You shut your mouth. I don't need them turning on us right now. <laughs> and here, here's the deal. We launched this Facebook page last week. It's actually doing really well the last week. Turtle Boy has a huge audience, and he shares it for us every day. So I was in the comment section. I said that Turtle Boy is not a team guy because he's shitting on us in the comment section. I take that back. Turtle Boy is a team guy because he's helping us out on Facebook. I want that to be known. Okay, good. That's important. All right. Yeah. Stay there, Cullen and, and uh, Mute. Who is uh, Hillary Burton? Do you know who Hillary Burton is? No. I, I, I'm not sure either, but uh, it's not. Hillary. she's kind of hot. She's a uh, brunette, or she was a brunette. Hillary Burton, and let's face it, hero, heroism, courage comes in many different forms. We've seen 
the nurses on the doctor, nurses and doctors on the front lines. You know, we've seen people, uh, you know, have these uh, have these very emotional uh, uh, parties outside of homes when they can't go in because the patient, or the person's old or they're sick. And we've seen guys go up in those cherry pickers into the third floor of the nursing home to, to say hi to their wife. Lots of heroes out there. But Hillary Burton, I want to put at the top of the list. She announced that she's going to let her hair go gray in solidarity with frontline workers. So in solidarity with the nurses and doctors, some of whom were getting infected and getting sick and working 12 hour days. And, you know, I'm, I have a good friend who's a nurse and it's brutal. She has to, you know, like live in the garage because she can't be around her kids and her husband. It's, it's brutal. Well, Hillary, uh, I'm going to, since I thought Dave would know who this is, because I, I, she's a One Tree Hill actress. I saw that. I don't, she, know, uh, I don't know what that is. That's one of Dave. That's right up Cullinane's alley. I certainly know One Tree Hill. I wouldn't yeah. know. She, she, um, she Instagrams a picture of herself where she's got some gray coming through. I mean, it's she's only 37. Uh, you're right. Yeah, I don't know what like One Tree Hill is. But... Or a nurse, and you hear that, like, that's got it. That's really, you're going to go in for a 13 hour shift where you're covering COVID. I have a buddy who's a doctor in New Jersey where he's in the hell of all of this, where he's got to take blood from his kids to test them, like, to see if they have it or for the antibodies. And he's going to take solace in the fact that Hillary Burton's not going to die. Here. God she, bless you, Hillary the, Burton. You're the best. She's the star of One Tree Hill, whatever that is, on Lifetime. Do I have that right? No, you definitely do not that's have that. B show. Yeah, One Tree Hill was on like 10 years ago. Yeah, we're not. This okay, so, she's so, a no so, Go on. She, on Instagram, she quote, here, here it is quote, for all of our frontline and essential workers who are too busy to fuss with things like hair color, I grow mine out in solidarity with you. When I see it, I'm reminded of all, all you are doing to keep us safe. I'm reminded that you deserve to be taken care of. Well, there you go. She's going to let the gray come through her hair. And I mean, I can't think of anything more valiant uh, than this. She continued, it's a small, silly, symbol, gray hair. Who cares? But I hope the nurse or the vet or the store clerk who is feeling tired and overwhelmed knows that it's a visible thing I could show that says, I'm with you. <laughs> That must, be, that must be like a thing go. I haven't read too much of that, but I, I do see a lot of people on Instagram with a lot of like a gray goatee that normally isn't there. So that's got to be like a trend going around with celebrities right now. Oh yeah, my God. that's the, new thing. The, the man, the sacrifices they make. God, they are so He's admirable. Where you think that would matter? That someone's going to say. What a nice gesture. She's yeah. not going to die. Why, why not support them? Because I had because I care about my appearance. I had my wife cut my hair. Like I don't support these causes either right now can you give us a question no, I don't have to do, there's folks on the front lines don't have time necessarily to shower and brush their teeth i'm you know in solidarity i'm not going to shower or brush my teeth or wash my clothes that's you know hot. at all that's well, hot. that sounds good it's, it's for them you know Man, give me credit yeah yeah tonight it's seven o'clock I, I know we don't live near each other but just as a gesture i think you should we should all go outside and clap for hillary burton whoever she is what do you think you I up may, for that? I'm probably doing naked. I think I may do that. That that's what might be my thing tonight. Good. Do it naked for in, in solidarity for Hillary <laughs> Burton. For all healthcare workers. I'm sure they'll really appreciate that from me. God, oh, what a we, random so what is that in the New York Post? I'm assuming. Like, what a, six, yeah, what a random celebrity to pick. I'm sure there's there's some other celebrity with an actual name recognition that they could have yeah, chosen that's, doing something crazy something like that. that. Some, some that. other D list or C list celebrity is like what what really awesome thing can I go announce in social media to make me um, get on the, the page of the newspaper or get to be trending on Twitter. So Dave Cullinane will check it. Check well, Dave Cullinane is defending and I'm going to remain neutral on this because it's fun with, because you got um, turtle boy on one side uh, and Dave Cullinane uh, arguing about these TikTok videos that nurses are doing. Yeah. yeah. Asking, you know, if they're so overwhelmed and now we know they're not overwhelmed, oh. just the opposite. Some are, but some, did you hear this fact from yesterday? This blew my mind. The Mayo Clinic is furloughing 30,000 workers. 30,000. I never knew that was that big. I guess it's pretty big. There's various you know, campuses. But these hospitals are laying people off because they're doing nothing but uh, ten, uh, catering to uh, coronavirus uh, victims, uh, sufferers. And they're not doing... Um, elective surgery, which is how they make all their money. They're losing money. They're laying people off. We did this yesterday. 
mute this another bizarre factoid to come out of this every day you re i mean i gotta Wait. look at these things twice um in um i think it's nationwide half the people according to dr scott atlas atlas half of chemo patients cancer patients have skipped at least one chemo appointment half yeah because they're afraid to get the virus if they go to the hospital so people are going to die Lots of people are going to die because of the virus, even though they don't get the virus. They're going to die from other things, such as neglect for their own own care. Well, that's the other funny thing is, you know, Gavin Gavin Newsom, the, the, the governor of California, he's closed, closing the beaches and closing the, the state parks. But he did open the hospitals up for elective surgeries because, you know what, you got to get your boob jobs and your face tucks in because those are making money for the hospitals. The hospital needs them. Yes, and they right. have the time, Even though they the have hospitals the may have corona patients where it can expose you to that, ah, that's not important. But you got to get your boob jobs and your facelifts in. Don't forget that. All there. I mean, I, again, I talked about a, a neighbor, a friend of mine who's waiting on brain surgery. Yeah, and he knee can't replacements, back, knee you know, any sort of people are in pain. Yep. There's real, you know, things that have to be done and not just because the hospitals make money, you know, because people need their need this treatment. Chemo? I mean, people are skipping chemo because they're afraid of the virus. You know, we have to take care of them too. We have to think of them too. But the latest TikTok video of nurses has pushed this this whole debate over the edge. I don't even know. It might maybe it's a setup, maybe it's a spoof, but there's these nurses who have a fake coronavirus patient, like a mannequin, mm -hmm. and they put right on him COVID-19 and they're carrying him and doing a dance with the with the uh, fake patient. And it's it got uh, a lot of play on Twitter and it got destroyed because I think those have gone too far. We all have great sympathy for the frontline workers. Yeah. I think they should, you know, skip the choreographed dances. If they want to dance spontaneously, that's one thing. But have you seen this one day where they have that fake? That, I've that seen it. I, I don't, I, I never would have pegged you and Turtle Boy as like optics people, as giving a shit about how it looks from an optics perspective. It, it doesn't as if, look good. As if all their time and energy went into creating this video and just, just to provide a little levity in the situation, like it's the most dramatic thing in the world. It's, in, it's, it's, it's you know what? They wouldn't be bad if you didn't think of the choreo choreography it took. It took time. We're spo they're supposed to not have time, they're supposed to be busy. If they just want to dance and shake hands, you know, slap high fives because they're doing a great job, that's good. I love when the people stick their heads out the window and clap for them. It's very cool. We're going to do that for Hillary Burton tonight. I think you guys well, are. You know, I'm struggling. I, support, I support the cause. I'm going to let my facial hair go gray, and I support all the causes. So go on with your TikTok videos. Do what you well, got. I'm gray, I'm gray and bald, so I can't I can't really complain about have that. You wore a mask yet? Mute no, I have not. I have not. I have not conformed to that. My wife does when she goes out. She doesn't wipe down the groceries when they come home. But I've heard people my, that do my that. My wife makes me wash but the I, grapes. That's my job. Yeah. She comes home to wash the grapes. Toughest I, am, I have a mask. Someone gave me a mask, and I have not worn it yet. I, I know. I assume I will have to because the grocery stores and CVS are going to make you. Last time I was yeah. in CVS, I was the only one. There must have been twenty-five people in there. And they all had masks and they were looking at me like there's something wrong with that guy over there, you know? Yeah. So you get really eventually, a pariah if you don't wear one. I got a sweet one from uh, the Cisco Brewery gave me. A buddy of mine works there. I got a sweet mask. It's a pink one. It looks really sick. I want to get a Trump. I want to get a red MAGA mask. Wouldn't that be cool? Because all these, all these nosy neighborhood narcs, you know they hate Trump. They hate MAGA. And just to put that on would be so great. But – well, Jerry, um, my struggle is right now is that I can't even the Peloton classes. They can't even teach those. They have to teach those from at home. Can you believe that? That that's a big. Well, I, I was going to ask you about this. Uh, there was Newton, a story. Newton, Newton's getting savvier at this, right? He drops in the Peloton reference, so everyone kind of know he works out. He starts tweeting about it a little bit, but now he's getting a little bit like for a very good cause. There. Very good cause, Dave. Yeah, I, need, okay. I need to ask about this. The other day, a story. There was a story that Peloton set a record. 23,000 people in one class, one wow. instructor from home. Mm -hmm. I saw a picture of her, this smoking hot, you know, cycling uh, spin instructor. She had 23,000 people in her class. Now, is it all uh, documented? Like, did somebody win that day? Have to do the most uh, so, PMs or burn the most calories? Or do they list them at the end? Did someone yes. win of the 23,000? Was someone at the top of the list? Correct. There is a scoreboard that they have there on the right. So it's uh, you, you have a speed, 
you have a resistance and then in the middle you have an output which is how much and that's what's usually that's what's the scoreboard is based on so uh somebody does win it and you you put an output out there you compete against it and it's it's actually it helped it has helped keep me sane to tell you the do truth you know when you do a class how many people are in the class yep you can you can and you could filter it too whether it's around friends whether uh it's around uh everybody that has taken you're, the class. you're crazy competitive i know you are big you're a big football star and uh, you're very athletic have you, have you ever won a class i have not i have not i've gotten a you're too, uh, you're too big i've done plenty of cycling i've done the uh, pmc yeah. people your size they win the race downhill but uphill i mean i'm big big for a bicyclist right and i'll be going downhill and i'll be just be passing all kinds of people you know, these little, you know, 120 pounders, you know, right. Lance Armstrong in his prime was big as a cyclist. And he was like 160. Uh, there was that kid from Massachusetts, Tyler Hamilton, right. who was on uh, um, who was on Lance's team and then turned on him like everyone else because Lance was such a scumbag. He weighed 120. He weighed 120. I mean, a yeah. grown man. He was a great cyclist. So someone your size can't really be elite, except if you're going downhill. Uphill, these guys, these little... These, those little tiny guys, they go blowing right by you. I've had a couple top 20, maybe uh, 10. Like yesterday, I had I had a, a good one yesterday for a, a good cause. Um, but it's 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 tough to do um, when you wrap up the the RPMs and stuff like that. But I get that. You know, the, the little guys that are so fast, it's just like I will never be a great American Ninja Warrior because those things just aren't built for bigger right. guys that are like six six three. It's for the little smaller guys that, that can handle that. But – you're able to you are able to get a pretty good uh you know a great workout in and you're able to 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 ramp it up you can you can place well it's just your output level you got to crank up resistance if you want to be able to do it i'm not a super big fast guy but i'll i'll crank up resistance and you do that every day every day this, wow. listen to this nonsense this this it, pandemic you, is nothing to people who don't have little kids i'm telling wow. you yesterday was hands down the worst day of this entire process for me that my my kid worked. Did you hit the Pink Whitney? I hit the. I, that's a problem, actually. You you talk about people drinking and have real problems. I was never a a, a, a drink at night guy. Like when I drink, I I excessively drink, so I limit that. During to, the day. Yeah, I, I limit that to Fridays and Saturdays, and I typically get drunk when I do it. Now I was never a let's just have a beer at night guy. I am a let's have multiple drinks at night guy now because of this. Is uh, 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 Homer, uh, uh, Homer Simpson or was it? Uh, Family Guy said, "Alcohol, the, the the source of and the solution to all your problems." Yeah, it's <laughs> exactly right. That's, you realize that you're becoming. You know what? It's true, Dave. You're you're actually becoming a true parent now. You when you your your description of well, how you used to drink is how you know young twenty year old people drink because they can sleep all day and lay on the couch and eat terrible food. When you have children, you have to actually what pay attention to them or be their source of entertainment. You can't have 70,000 drinks a night and expect to function the next day. This is part of your maturation oh, process. thank you. This, this is part of the learning process. This yeah. is it. Yeah, you can drink every day. You just don't need to drink 70,000 drinks every day. Uh, It's perfectly time where my kids are literally the worst ages possible for something like this. What time, what time you, you hit the ride your freaking Peloton all day? What'd you What's say? All day. No, you do it. He's got a bunch of kids, and he did, you do I an know, hour. Yeah. An hour. That's right. Yeah, got an, anywhere between them. yeah, half hour to an hour class. Yeah, but they can occupy themselves. So you're in a whole different class. You, you can't even complain. You really can't. You need complain. to be creative. Yeah. See, I like I have a six year old daughter who doesn't have any friends, so I have to be creative. Whether it's whether it's create a game of throwing a ball off the stairwell that she has to catch, or jump on the trampoline. You got to create some things, Dave. Go yeah. outside the box and and That's do. The, you can't just sit there and have her watch TV. Create some things to do. Okay. Uh, nothing, nothing, wrong with TV. nothing wrong with TV. Let's be honest. We'd all yeah. lose our minds without TV. Yeah. You can do some of that. I just, so I, yeah, uh, I have trouble. I, I, I said this before. I feel like, you know, Cullinan with the attention span, but I'm having trouble like reading a book. I read a chapter and I just, I get fidgety. And I, you know what I want to do? I want to know what the latest news is. I want to know the latest, you know, death count of the latest rules. Are yeah. they opening this up and closing that down? I can't. There's nobody out there. Now they might retain it better, understand it better than than I do, but there's no one out there who's read more about this current crisis than I have cuz I do it all day. I do it all night. I just sit there and whatever news is breaking, I'm I'm you know going to different sites and I am reading everything I can read on it. So I might not be that great at grasping everything, but I'm 
I'm reading everything and, and, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I couldn't spend any more time than I do reading about things. Cause I feel I, like it's history unfolding. You know, I feel like 10 years, 20 years from now, people are going to talk about the pandemic of 2020. Without a doubt. I think I have to get my, keep myself sane because I, I read, you know, from reading all the stuff on the, about COVID, but then, you know, part of what I do for my full-time job is, you know, you're reading about all the different companies. So you're reading company reports and seeing what these companies and how they're reacting to, to this and the steps that they're taking, whether it's food companies, computer companies, it's amazing all the different, you know, people that are factored into this. And everything has to is it revolves around this this COVID that sometimes I just have to you know get get away from it. So I've, I've actually had two books that I you know I'm reading. One is uh, you know we talked about uh, David Goggins book. Yeah, David Goggins uh, can't hurt me. Can't, can't hurt me. It's a great read. I I would love to hear his thoughts on all this because he's going to work, work, work on that. Work on that. <laughs> Which you know brings us to our uh, weekend. We're going to do another bonus podcast, Cullinane, and and Mute's going to be a part of it, and I'm looking forward to this. I had a uh, list of guests back in uh, January when we started this, and we're checking them off one at a time. We've had a couple, but number the top the, the guy we're getting this weekend is top of the list, and David Goggins we're going to work at for another day. If you don't know who he is, he's the toughest man alive. He's a uh, former Navy SEAL. He did Navy SEAL training three times, passed it twice, Went through uh, Texas. Uh, went through Texas Army Ranger training. He likes pain. He likes you know endurance tests. I think the first race he ever ran was like a hundred miles. You know he's yeah. he's completely insane and completely just the mentally toughest son of a bitch you will ever see or hear. He's crazy. He can't do traditional radio or TV because he swears so much. He can't control himself. But he's a great podcast guest i've heard him on other podcasts i've heard him with rogan he's great and uh, i highly recommend you can't hurt me i read it i forced my son to read it he's you know halfway through but the guy's just incredible mind-boggling how tough he is he weighed 300 pounds he was an exterminator that was his job when he saw the light joined the navy became a seal and now you see him and hear from him and you just get you know the hairs in the back of your yeah. neck stand up. he's so inspirational yeah, he's a he's a bad dude. That's all I would say. I would not want to. He is dude. mentally strong, and I, you know, if he was if he was in front of the uh, in front of the world talking about this, it'd be great. It's kind of like he's a more um, profane version of Dan Crenshaw, the right. uh, the house the house uh, represent down in Texas. Who he's doing something that I I really really admire. He actually is gonna send china, wants to send china a bill for all of this i admire the hell out I think of that germany I already did that we're gonna do that in some form could be dead i love Shop that Cruz. somebody will send china a bill of course they won't pay it and uh you know if biden ever wins god forbid if biden ever wins he'll apologize to china for all the the oh. harsh words that trump and everyone else said about them he is a good friend of china if you want if you want to to, to please to placate the chinese and uh, vote Biden. But I wanted to ask you about this, Jerry. I saw this and 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 I thought it was intriguing that Joe Biden mentioned that he would be up or interested, if elected, of having Republicans on his cabinet. I wonder how that's going to play out and how that, if that is an olive branch to get to say Republican. that. But I know, but is it. that something? But some Republicans hate it. Trump too. So, you know, for uh, he, would say, reasons. he would say, I'm open to it, but he won't. I mean, he, here's what it's, he'll say he'll, he'll, he'll consider Mitt Romney. He'd ah. say, yeah, Mitt Romney's Secretary of State, because Mitt hates Trump, Trump hates Mitt. And there are a couple, Jeff Flake, maybe, but there aren't many. I mean, it is amazing the support Trump has among Republicans. Obviously, there was a split back when, when he ran and he insulted everyone and little Marco and lion Ted, they're all behind him a hundred percent. He's his approval rating among Republicans is like 96%. The guy, the only guys that Biden could even consider picking would be Mitt and maybe one or two others, but he won't, he's gone left. He's tacked left. The Bernie bros are pulling him left. He's going to, you know, there's more, you're more likely to see a transgender cabinet member than you are a Republican. You're going to see his VP. It's going to be a woman. It's going to be a woman who, you know, who will attack Tara Reid. But, you know, we can do that another day. We can do that another day. <laughs> we got to get going here, uh, Mute Man. We're going, to, uh, we're going to bring you back for a special weekend edition of the Callahan Podcast. I'm looking forward to this. 
I'm just going to say it's it's one of my favorite people, one of your favorite people. We're hoping to talk to him this weekend, so you can look for that. Uh, but uh, thanks for uh, joining us today, Mute. I will see you again this weekend. Thanks to uh, Shake Concrete and Allied Paving and our friends at DCU. Thanks to everyone for listening, for rating, reviewing, for telling a friend. We appreciate it. We're going to survive this pandemic. You know, you're the one. You're the expert. You. Some industries are getting hurt worse than others. Well, let me tell you, the podcast industry is surviving, sometimes even thriving. We are doing okay. Sports radio, talk radio in general, I'm not sure they survived this. This is killing them, but we're doing okay. Thanks to everybody for listening. I appreciate it. I'm Jerry Callahan. This is the Callahan Podcast. We will talk to you again. Look for us again tomorrow.